Hello everyone! Today I want to share with you some cool procedural textures in Blender 3.1. As you may already know, Blender has some procedural texture already built in, but if you're like me, you always wish for more. Lucky for us, using the node system, we can combine the procedural textures provided by Blender in order to create new ones. In this video, I start creating a basic Poit texture, and then we'll add some extra parameters to have some fun. If you are into this kind of stuff, that is. As simple as it might be, the Poit pattern can be useful not only for texturing clothes or fabric, like it's often used in the fashion industry, but we can use it as a component for some architectural material like tile, wallpaper or concrete. Creating this simple geometric pattern is also a good exercise to better understand the node system and to learn how to combine simple nodes to create wonderful effects. Let's start by opening Blender and creating a new scene. We can remove the default objects by selecting them all with the A key and then hitting the X key. Now we can add a new mesh grid object. In the material tab, we add a new material. Now we can move to the shading workspace to edit the new material. The first thing that we need for a POA pattern is a circle and we can create one using a gradient texture. That doesn't look like a circle, so we change the gradient type from linear to spherical. Not a full circle yet, but by adding a texture coordinate node and a mapping node, we can translate the gradient on the UV plane to center it on our mesh. In the mapping node, we select type texture instead of point. Since the UV coordinates on our grid are in the range from 0 to 1, and the gradient texture is centered on the origin, we can use an offset of 0.5 to center the gradient on our mesh. So, in the location parameter of the mapping node, we type 0.5 for the X and the Y coordinate. Now, we add a color ramp between the gradient color output and the material shader input. So, we will gain more control on our circle. To make a solid circle and not a blue red one, we change the interpolation of the color ramp from linear to constant. Now, moving the right control point of the color ramp to the left, we can bring back our circle and if we set the position of the node to 0.5, our circle will fit exactly the entire mesh. Nice circle, but not quite a poa pattern yet. Before doing anything else, to keep order in our node, we can create a node group. In this way, we can keep separate the part of the node tree that is responsible for generating our circle from the rest of the nodes. First, we select all the nodes in between the input coordinates and the material shader. Then, we tell Blender to make a new group from our selection by clicking Add, Group, Make Group. Blender is now showing us the newly created group. We see that on the left, a special group input node has been added. As well, on the right, a special group output node. Now, by pressing the N key while in the node editor, we can open the right panel where, inside the group tab, we can specify the input parameter for our newly created group. Since we left the texture coordinate input out of our group node when we created it, Blender automatically has created an input parameter of type vector. The first thing that we want to control of our circle is the radius, so by clicking on the plus button, we can add a new parameter. We set its type to float and we name it size. Now we can specify a default value of 1 and a minimum value of 0. In response to our action, Blender has created a new socket in the group input node. We can now use this new parameter to control the scale of our mapping node. We can simply drag the new socket to the scale socket of the mapping node. By pressing tab, we exit the newly created node group and go back to the main shader, 
where we see that Blender has placed our new input parameter with its input socket below the input vector that is still connected to the input UV coordinate socket. As good practice, we rename the node group to circle. Playing with the size parameter, we see that now it controls the radius of our circle. The next step is to tell Blender to replicate our circle to create the POA pattern that we want. To do that, we need to manipulate the X and Y component of the input coordinates, and so we click Add, Converter, Separate XYZ. Now we add the Combine XYZ node. We reconnect the X and Y component while we left the Z coordinate to zero, since we don't need it for our 2D texture. To transform the X and Y coordinates to make the pattern repeat indefinitely, we add a math node and set the operation to ping pong. The ping pong operator, like the module operator, returns an output that is bound in the range 0 to whatever value we put in the second slot. Unlike the module operator that returns the reminder of a division, so that the value will be negative for negative input values, the ping pong will always be positive. Another difference is that once it reaches the maximum value, the modulo abruptly goes to zero, creating a step-like effect, while the ping pong operator gradually goes back to zero in a linear fashion. Now, to automate the process, I start by creating a new input value node of type float. We will use this parameter to set the number of circles that we want to fit in each unit of length in our pattern. So we rename it n. Now we add a new math node, set the operation to divide, we put a fixed value of 1 in the first socket. In this way, the output value will represent the maximum size of all circles in order to fit n of them in a unit of length. Now we can connect this output to the second value of the ping pong operator, both for the x and the y coordinate. That doesn't look like it works as intended. We could call it a feature, but let's try and fix it. First, we select our circle node group. By pressing tab, we go back to edit the circle. This time, we want to control individually the x and the y component of the location parameter of our mapping node. So, we drag the input socket and drop it on an empty spot. In this way, Blender will show us the search menu, where we can type Combine and select Combine XYZ to create a new node. Now, we can drag the empty socket under the site's input parameter and connect it to the X component of our newly created node. In this way, Blender will automatically create a new input parameter for us. We repeat the same for the Y component and we are done. By pressing Tab, we go back to the main shader. To center the circle, we calculate the new offset simply dividing by two the sides using a new math node. For now, we'll use the same value for both the X and the Y offset. Nice! It looks like it works but we still need to properly adjust the sides of the circle to fit the required number of circles in the allotted space. To do that, we add a new input parameter node of type float. Like we did for the spacing, we divide its value for n using a new math node and fit the output to our circle node group. Let's see if it works as intended. Well done! Now that we have our basic POA pattern, let's modify it to create ellipses instead of simple circles. Instead of a single diameter, we want to specify the X and Y axis of the ellipses and feed it to the scale parameter of the mapping node via a new combined XYZ node. And as before, we use the drag method to create the combined XYZ node and then we drag to create the input parameters. Let's see if we put a proper value, we get back some ellipses instead of these lines. Connect this to that and see if it works. 
maybe if we reconnect it properly all right much better now that we have our ellipses we can try to add a rotation to do that we select our circle node group press tab now we can drag the rotation socket and drop it on an empty spot in this way blender will show us the search menu where we can type combine and select combine xyz to create a new node and then we drag the empty input socket and connect to the z socket to create the input parameter and then we add a new mat node and select the operation to convert to radians this conversion is needed because we want to operate in degree while the rotation vector requires radians let's see if it works all right the ping pong operator creates this alternating pattern if we don't want it we have to use the module operator instead of the ping pong operator we can copy and paste the node using ctrl c and ctrl v connect this to that we can use the layout reroute node to reconnect these input sockets we can use a mix rgb node to combine or switch between the two variants but now we have to fix the negative values with some math node and some control logic we can use a math node with the less than operation to detect whether the input value is negative and then a multiply add node to add an offset to make the negative value positive if we connect the output of the less than operation to the multiplier parameter of the multiply add node we will obtain a conditional add operation whereas if the coordinate is less than zero we will add the number that we put in the first slot now we can create a new node group to encapsulate all these nodes and then make some order by using the layout reroad node we can avoid making duplicate inputs when creating the group now we can rename the input parameters and create a new one to control the mix rgb node and another one to control the rotation as we did before we simply drag the empty input socket and connect it to the rotation socket to automatically create the input variable by selecting the input node and pressing tab we go back then we can delete these input variables and test the new node group well done finally we can rename the node group to Poa. now let's have some fun what if we want to assign a random solid color to each circle since we want a solid color for the entire circle we cannot simply assign a noise pattern to the color this time we need to transform the coordinate used to draw the color in a way that each point on the same circle gets the same exact coordinates and we don't want it to repeat over the next circle instead of the modulo or the ping pong operator we can simply use the division and then take only the integral part of the results in this way we get a positional index or a constant value but different one for each circle now we feed these new coordinates to a random texture to set the color we use a mix rgb node and use the black and white mask as a factor here i'm using a white noise texture but we could use any texture and we filter the result with a color ramp with the same method we can change the size of each circle or we could add a different offset to each circle or all of the above now I'm adding a second output for our black and white mask 
to have more fun with it. Now let's try to combine two different patterns with a mix RGB node. To add an offset between the two patterns, I use a mapping node. To set a different color for each pattern, we can daisy chain two mix RGB nodes using the two black and white masks as mixing factor. Now we could add a third mix RGB node and with the multiply option, we should be able to isolate only the interference of the two patterns. Now we can add another mix RGB node to set the color for the interference region. Now, if we increase the size of the circles to make them overlap, we can test our new node setup. So far, so good. Now we can create a new node group to encapsulate all these nodes. We can expose the input parameters that we want to use simply by dragging the empty socket to the parameters that we want to expose. We can use the layout rewrote node to use the same value for different parameters. Now we can do the same to expose the colors. If we exit by pressing tab, we can start testing our new node group. It looks like it works as intended, but now if we expose different parameters for the second pattern, we can have even better results. Let's check how it works. Well done! Finally, we can rename the node group and then, as before, we expose the parameters for the offset and test if it works as intended. And I think that's all for today. Maybe the next time we will play with some polygons instead of simple circle and ellipses. I hope that this video has inspired you to try some new combination of node and let me know in the comment section if you are into this kind of stuff. Bye bye!